Hi, in this lesson we are going to model a new brake disc which is slightly more complex than the one we made in lesson 2. This lesson is part of a SOLIDWORKS crash course on Udemy where we are modeling the BSC mono part by part. So let's begin. Let's make one side first and then we will mirror it to produce the other half and merge the two. Now we will use accurate dimensions wherever it is going to affect the surrounding components. The features which are not relevant to other components we can provide with approximate dimensions to speed things up. But for obvious reasons when we are going to model a component to be manufactured, every feature must be fully defined with the right dimensions and tolerances. We will cover tolerances too in later chapters. You can access this mind map shown using the link in the description. Now this particular disc is an assembly of two parts with a bolted joint. So let's create the disc first and then we will create the hub and assemble them. Now in usual case a disc or any cylindrical part will always be made with a revolve tool. But this is not a usual part given the wings at the center and the curved pattern. So let's begin with an extrusion first. First of all let's make a circle with OD of 295mm which is basically the disc OD and an ID of 164mm. Use the extrude tool to generate the geometry but instead of extruding it from the sketch plane, use offset to center the disc with respect to the front plane. In this case, the offset will be equal to half the disc thickness which is 27.94mm. So the offset comes out to be 13.97mm. But in this case, the extrusion direction will be towards the front plane since we are already offsetting it to half the disc thickness. Calculate the extrusion depth directly in the dialog box by entering an equation using the equal to sign. By referencing the mind map, enter equal to 27.94 minus 15.5 divided by 2. Next, we will create the outer slot pattern. To do that, open a sketch on the plane and use the parallelogram tool to create a shape at a similar inclination. Cut it using the cut tool with a depth of 2mm. Now use the circular pattern to generate the pattern with 23 instances. The benefit of creating a pattern using the features instead of sketch tools is that it's easier to edit it later and also you can visualize the end results better. Also note that when you click on certain feature, its parameters are displayed in the graphics area. So if you want to change it, you can do right from that. Create the central curved veins in a similar fashion. Open a sketch, create the shape using splines and using extrude to generate the geometry. The extrude height must be half the overall fin height since we are going to mirror this. The physical air gap is 15.5 mm in this case, so use half this value which comes out to be 7.75 mm. Now let's make the fillet. Select the edge and hit the fillet tool. Now there are three functionalities that you can use to speed things up in the selection process. First is that you can even select the edge through the geometry in most cases. So you don't have to tilt the geometry several times to make the selection. Second is that you can even use the selection manager which pops up once you select an edge. This helps to select multiple edges at once. Third is that you can use select other option which makes it easier to pick an entity out of a dense area. Now control select the two features that are going to be patterned and hit the circular pattern tool. Let's set the number to 23 here. Note that in this case by filleting the wing edges before the circular pattern, we didn't have to select so many edges manually. So you can sequence the features like this to save time. Now mirror the whole body with respect to the plane and check the merge option to join the newly created body with the old one. Now we have done two clever things here. 
We have mirrored the whole body and not the individual features created so far, which has saved us from having to select them manually. Also, we have saved ourselves from having to select the same features twice on either end of the disk. This has saved some CPU power which would have multiplied since these features will be rebuilt again and again during the course of modeling. You can see at this point that we have created a moderately complex geometry in such a less time just by properly sequencing the features. Now to generate the whole pattern let's use the whole wizard. Using the whole wizard you can produce any standard size hole within seconds and even change the type and size with minimal effort. But before we use this wizard, we will have to define the whole positions. You can do that by using points or circles. To define the position, let's open a sketch on the plane from where you want the hole to begin. We will position the hole by using a PCD of 177.8 mm and a hole diameter of 6.425 mm. Now this diameter is unimportant since we are not going to produce the holes using this dia. We are only going to use these for positioning the whole wizard holes, so it can be even points for that matter. Let's create a circular pattern by using the tool and use 12 instances in this case. Let's exit and hit the whole wizard tool. Select the hole type. In this case, we are going to drill the tap holes. Tap holes produce the standard size holes which are to be tapped to produce the threads later on. As it is apparent from the icons, we can produce counter bore, counter sunk and slot holes too. We will cover more of this wizard later on, but for now, let's create a tap hole. Select the standard, which is metric in this case, and hole type is tap drill. This will display all the tap drill sizes below. You should note that selecting the M6 size will not get you the hole with 6-7 diameter. As a matter of fact, it will be 5mm. To generate M6 threads, we will have to produce a hole with smaller dia, so when we tap it, the thread OD becomes close to 6mm. In short, a 6mm tap will produce a hole which accepts an M6 screw or bolt after machining. We usually produce a smaller hole since some material is removed by the tap tool in machining. Now select the end condition to be up to next, so the hole is produced up to the next wall. Now that we have done defining the hole specs, let's get on with the hole positions. If you had not selected the plane before launching the tool, the software will ask you for the plane from where to begin. After selecting the plane, select the whole position using the sketch created earlier. Note that you are in sketch mode at this stage. So if you accidentally click where you do not want the hole, just go on with defining the other hole positions. Later on, hit the escape key to exit the point tool and delete the extra points after selecting them. Let's start creating the semicircular pattern on the inside. You might have noticed that we can produce this pattern by making a similar pattern as we made in the last sketch. Except that in this case the whole dia is larger and it is also offset by 15 degrees. The offset angle is 15 degrees since there are two equally spaced patterns which are inside a quadrant. So the head count becomes 6 in this case. Hence the offset angle is 90 by 6 which is 15 degrees. Now to place the first circle spaced at 15 degrees from the top, let's use a 3 point arc. The first point in a 3 point arc defines the center, the second point the radius and the third point defines the arc length or angle. In this case, we will keep the angle to be 15 degrees. Now, to fully constrain the arc, let's create the point at the top and make it coincident with the starting point of arc. Now that we have the first position, create a circle with a dia of 25 mm, after which we can go on to create the pattern with 12 instances. Now let's cut the pattern using the extrude cut tool. To make the corner smooth as in the drawings, use the fillet tool with a dia of 5mm. In this case we will use the selection filter to select similar edges and save time. So as you can see that we have finished creating the disk and it is a fairly complicated part for beginners and we have created this in minutes. So if you know the concepts well, even complex parts are going to be a piece of cake. In the next lesson we are going to create the hub and assemble the two parts in an assembly using fasteners. So join us on Facebook and YouTube to stay in touch and partner with us on Patreon to share our work and revenues. Have a nice day.